When it comes to us independent video shooters, size matters. Sensor size matters. And bragging rights go to those with a full frame camera. Owning one of these, well, not this, but owning a full frame camera is quite the flex in the DSLR mirrorless camera world. The bigger sensor just has so many benefits and everyone is aware of the high price tag. Being a low budget camera guy, I shoot with APS-C cameras, which have smaller sensors than the full frame cameras. And even this isn't as small as micro four thirds sensors. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, here are some legitimate reasons why I don't shoot with a full frame camera. First off, let me just say I would love to shoot with a full frame camera. I mean, I've never used one, but everyone raving about how good they are makes me want one. Let's take a look at some of the benefits. Number one, the bigger sensor size means there's a lot more surface area for light to fall on, increasing low light performance. Number two, the larger sensor also comes with larger pixels, which captures more light and color information, which reduces the amount of noise at higher ISO levels when compared to APS-C cameras. And number three, because there is no crop factor limiting how close you could get to your subject, this flexibility with proximity gives you more control over depth of field. The closer you could get to your subject, the closer you could focus and the blurrier your background will be. All of that sounds amazing, so why don't I use one? There are two barriers preventing me from buying a full frame camera. The first being cost, and the second being utility. Before we move on, the full frame camera I'll be referring to for the purposes of this video will be Sony's least expensive full frame camera with the highest video quality, and that is of course Sony's a7 III. I wanted to put up Sony's least expensive full frame camera up against my APS-C models in an attempt to remove cost as a barrier. Any other full frame camera with higher video specs would obviously be more expensive and therefore increasing that cost barrier. One could say buying full frame is an investment because producing potentially higher quality videos could land me more work. But considering that any of the full frame cameras out there are more than double the cost of my most expensive APS-C camera, for me, the expense is not worth the utility. While low light and ISO performance is significantly better than smaller sensors, it's not worth double the money. For the average freelance or self-employed videographer who uses mirrorless or DSLR prosumer bodies, video specs between full frame and APS-C aren't that different. The bigger sensor doesn't reward you with more resolution for video. Here we see screenshots of the video specs off the Sony website. I suggest you pause the video here so that way you could read through both of them. Notice any difference? Neither do I. If you want to go with more resolution for video, smaller sensors are actually a stronger option. For example, Panasonic GH5 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K are both micro four thirds sensors capable of shooting 4K resolution up to 60 frames per second. Now, being a video guy whose client work is primarily posted on social media platforms, resolution matters very little to me. When audiences are scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, on their phones, the average viewer is not going to be able to tell whether something was shot in 4K or higher, nor are they going to care. Case in point, full frame barely outperforms APS-C when it comes to video image quality. It is my opinion that image quality, clarity, or sharpness is a product of the lens you use, not the sensor size. The only significant advantage I could think of for video is the improved low light performance. I mean, if noise is a concern, you could always buy denoiser plugins for your editing software, or some softwares have it already built in. Full frame cameras also require bigger, heavier, and more expensive lenses. They're generally bigger to accommodate the bigger sensor size and heavier because they're packed with high quality glass. If you're going to use a bigger sensor, you're going to want to use lenses that will bring out the camera's full potential. Utility refers to how much I could do with the camera. Much of the creativity that goes into my videos comes from putting my camera gear at risk to get interesting shots. I'm either putting my camera on homemade rigs, handling a gimbal while riding a one wheel or Segway, or just being plain irresponsible with the camera. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, anything bad that can happen will absolutely be my fault. But the size and weight of the camera has a lot to do with minimizing the risk of destroying my equipment. Full frame camera bodies are bulkier than APS-C models. And I already told you about how full frame lenses are generally bigger and bulkier too. APS-C mirrorless camera bodies? Look at this, so much smaller. It's about the size of my phone. A smaller compact setup makes it easier to mount onto my DIY rigs, and it also makes balancing on my rides a lot easier and less risky. And if ever, God forbid, an accident happened during one of these crazy stunts and my gear gets damaged, at least replacing it won't be as expensive as replacing full frame. I should really look into getting camera insurance. If you wanna see what APS-C sensors are capable of, click any of these videos, or click right here to subscribe to my channel and binge watch everything I've done. And as always, my complete gear list is in the description box below. Check out exactly what I use to make videos. This is Kevin Mendoza, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.